Before we get going, just a couple quick announcements and reminders from me. Um, obviously, you all have been great about helping us spread our message about metal detectors. Go just remind fans this year to kind of plan an extra couple minutes to get into the stadium. It'd be very helpful for us. We try to make sure we have the most secure environment possible. Uh, also, we do still have single game tickets available for some select games, including our season opener. And obviously, we, uh, we continue to remain extremely excited about the ACC network for fans who haven't seen their uh, cable provider provide it yet. Check out getaccn.com and they'll be able to uh, hopefully request it in advance of the 22nd before we kick off on the 29th. So with that, I'll turn it over to Coach. Yeah, man, let's, let's sell all them tickets. Let's, we, we've got 27 days. Uh, we're going we're gonna to bring some life to Death Valley. So excited about that. Really uh, excited to get started. This is, this is always just, you know, so much fun uh, to be able to get back on the field you know, doing what we love to do. Uh, for me, this is my 38th year uh, of football. Uh, started tackle football in the fifth grade of tackle football. Uh, so my 38th year, and uh, it's my 30th year in college football. Would be my 32nd, but I, I was out of coaching in 01, 02. Uh, so my 30th year of coaching or, and playing in college, uh, my 17th year at Clemson and my 11th as the head coach. So unbelievable. And uh, man, it's just, it just never gets old uh, when it's time to get back on the field. And, and uh, you know, the last three weeks, us coaches have been kind of uh, really going through our checklist and, and getting everything ready. I always equate it to kind of getting the plane off the ground, you know. If you're ever on a plane and the pilot just jumps in there and takes off, you better you better hold on. Uh, usually, you know, there's a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of prepping, a lot of a lot of things that you've got to do before you can ever get the plane off the ground. And so uh, we spent five days as a staff, really um, kind of reinstalling our program, and then we've spent the last two days uh, doing the same thing with our players. And so today is an exciting day because we get to get back to football. And, uh, but everybody's on the same page and understands uh, who we are, what we do, and why we do things the way we do it, and, and uh, ready, to, ready to go attack the season and accept a new challenge. This is a, this is a, uh, uh, you know, a brand new opportunity, a brand new challenge. Uh, this team uh, has not done anything. You know, this team has not won a single game. Uh, this team has won zero games. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're right there with everybody else in the rest, the rest of the country, you know, who's playing football, uh, prepping and practicing and planning and, and uh, you know, putting the work in. And, you know, hopefully we can have a, a great season, but there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, and you all start at the same spot. You, you don't carry anything over. Uh, you know, all the preseason stuff and all the talk and all that mess, uh, it's, it's, it's time to be about it and not talk about it. And uh, so that's what today's about, getting back on the field and, and, uh, and getting to work. Um, this team is going to be a lot of fun. I can already tell you that. Uh, everybody, a lot of our fans and stuff, they get excited about today because it's like, OK, this for them, this is kind of when it starts. Uh, but this is just the halfway point for us. You know, we, we have a journey every year, and it starts in January. And this is, we're, we're kind of getting into the third quarter of our journey you know, the third phase, if you will. So we've been putting a lot of work in uh, since January, not just, you know, today. Uh, it's just today the lights kind of come out and, and uh, we get to be on the field as a team and kind of put it all together. But, um, you know, Abraham Lincoln, I think, said, if you, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend the first four sharpening the blade. And uh, that's kind of that's really what it's about in football. Uh, because you spend so much time preparing. And this team has put a lot of work in, kind of sharpening the blade, if you will. And uh, you know now it's time to get out there and, and, and put the work in. So looking forward to it. Uh, our roster is, is uh, we've got 120. Uh, we've got 80 freshmen and sophomores uh, that, that bring a lot of hunger and competitiveness and uh, energy, enthusiasm, and, and offer us a bright future for sure. Uh, and we've got 40 juniors and seniors that bring a lot of experience, uh, that really know 
and understand what it takes. They got a very clear vision, and uh, we're counting on those those guys to help lead the way. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, our roster's kind of different than it was last year uh, when we had such an experienced uh, group. But uh, ready to get to work. And again, we're going to play in 27 days, so uh, today's just day one, and, and we got to make the most of it. Injury-wise, we're in a good spot as a team. Um, Y'all pretty much know about everybody. The only guy that, that I think is the new guy is Logan Cash, and I, I think I think I talked about that not too long ago at our ACC stuff. Uh, but uh, Logan's got to have some back surgery, so he's going to be out for a while. Uh, I think it's scheduled next week, and then. Uh, 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 Brighton is still working back. You know he'll be he'll be a part of camp and, and kind of in the rehab process. And, and then uh, Mari is continuing to really do well. Uh, he looks great, and he's he's still in his progression, uh, recovering from his injury. So, other than that, we're in a good spot as far as where we're starting. Uh, you know, and excited to get out on the field. Davis Allen is, a, is nothing serious, he, but he he's he might be limited here first first few days uh, with a sore ankle. So get him up and rolling here pretty soon, but uh, we're in a good spot. And then uh, uh, just a couple new people, really pretty much all of our staff's back, and uh, really nothing has changed since the last time we talked, other than uh, we've got uh, Travis Blanks uh, is, is now uh, coming into football for, full time, and is gonna. he's been working for Ite and doing some development stuff, and he is going to uh, uh, you know head up all of our former player engagement. I felt like that was an area that that kind of a, just another area that we could uh, really make a difference for our players and our, for our former players in particular. So Travis is going to head that up. We're excited to have him back in this building. And, and then uh, Maddie Williams is a, is a creative media uh, uh, person that's come on board with us. And Nikki Lyons is uh, working in our nutrition operations area. So we've got just a few new people. But other than that, uh, you know, all hands on deck uh, from last year. And excited to get started today. Yeah, I know you're here to address the, the players I know that are on the current roster. You've talked about Feaster leaving, but just any reaction to the news that's come out that he's going to wind up uh, across the state? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I, it's a fair question. Uh, it just happened, so definitely uh, uh, a, a, great, a fair question, something I need to address, but that'll be the last time I address it uh, because it's all about our team. It's all about these guys here, not people who aren't here. Uh, but what I would say is, and I think it's important that, that people understand, uh, uh, Tavian earned the right to do that. You know, I mean, I mean, am I glad he went to the rival? Or glad, I'm not glad that he's not here. I mean, I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm disappointed in is he's, he, he's not here because he definitely, uh, you know, was a valuable member of our team and could have helped this football team. But, but having said that, uh, he is a great young man. Great family, not one problem with that guy. Uh, did everything that was asked of him. He's leaving here as the second, I think he's got the second biggest yards per carry in school history. He was a very productive player for us. He battled some injuries here and there, uh, but had some big moments and was a big part of our team for the last three years. But more importantly, he graduated from Clemson. And, uh, you know, so to me, everything should be tied to education. And that young man uh, not only came in here and, and was a great teammate, uh, was a selfless person, uh, worked his butt off to get better, uh, you know, was a joy to be around. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, he graduated. And if he felt like that he needed a, a, a better opportunity, you know, than what maybe he had here playing wise, then that's, he earned that opportunity. It uh, doesn't mean I have to like it, uh, but to me, when you come to college and you graduate, that's what it's all about. If a guy comes in here and graduates in two and a half years, he's earned that right. And, uh, you know, because that's what it's all about to me is, uh, is, is, is finishing. So, uh, you know, I wish him all the best, you know, all, all, all but one of them uh, for sure. And it's, it's, you know, it's a little different. I mean, but it's, whether you're going to your rival or going to somebody else on your schedule, that's kind of where we are in college football now. Uh, you're going to see that more and more. Uh, but again, if a guy graduates, I, I think that, that they've earned the opportunity to do what they want to do. Uh, and 
And at the end of the day, though, uh, he's a young man I care about, young man I respect, young man I love, always will, a uh, valuable member of our team while he was here. And, you know, he's, he's moved on to uh, a different situation for himself, and there's really nothing negative about it in our conversation, just what he felt like he needed to do. And doesn't mean I agree with it, but again, that's, that's his decision. So uh, we certainly wish him well. And again, uh, he was a model student athlete for us. Uh, any issues at all, and uh, you know he's a great player, and uh, wish him wish him all the best. Dabo, you talk every year about turning the page. Whatever happened last year doesn't matter this year. Yet you have a bunch of guys who never lost a game in college football. Are there going to be some reminders that hey, what happened last year doesn't really mean that much in this camp that we're getting set to go through? Yeah, well, always, and we got a bunch of guys on this team that have never won a game, too. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it kind of balances itself yeah. out. But yes, and that's just what we do. That's just a part of our, our, our culture here. Um, and that's why we've been so consistent. You know, I, somebody asked me at the media days, you know, like, oh, man, what are you, how are y'all going to handle it now? Y'all are, the, y'all are the, uh, the, the hunted or whatever. I'm like, well, it's just kind of business as usual. You know, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we've had a eight, ten plus win seasons in a row, you know. I mean, we've been, every every time we show up to play, that other team wants to beat us. And that's not that's not anything new this year. And so, for us, it, it's, it, we have a process that we believe in that we go through every year. And it doesn't start now. This started back in January. We're just entering a, a different, a, a new phase of our journey for this team, this 2019 team. But, uh, absolutely, that's, that's stuff we talk about all the time. And, and again, uh, our program has won 15 in a row. People want to talk about streaks. This team ain't won one. They ain't won a game. Uh, hadn't played a game, hadn't won a game. So, you know, there, there's, there's, uh, there is no carryover. But I think the best part of our program has been the buy-in of that year after year after year after year. And it's allowed us to be very consistent. Um, and, uh, and be one of the more consistent teams in the country. Uh, so we start over. We don't assume anything. Uh, we've got a lot. We've got to be unbelievable teachers this year. I do think we've recruited well, but we've got to connect, we've got to teach, and we've got to develop well. You know, this team, it's our job to meet them. we got a lot of guys that got a long way to go. You know, last year's team, I, uh, you know, you know you could, I could walk out of my office and, and walk right next door and meet them right there. That's where they were, you know, with that team uh, right out of the gate. This team, you know, I got to walk out of my office and I got to walk all the way to the indoor facility. You know, they're, they're, we got to meet them where they are. Uh, and so there's a, there's a different gap from a coaching and a teaching standpoint. So we've got to do an unbelievable job uh, as a staff in, in getting this group together. Uh, you know, the challenge is the same. Uh, you know, you've got to have that change and that character. But this team, I think the biggest thing is, can we develop the chemistry? You know, that's kind of the next part of it. In camp, in this phase, it's really kind of where all that comes together. So, uh, you know, because, there, again, there's a lot of – we have 29 signings that came in here and, and, you know, 10 or 11 new walk-ons. So there's a bunch of new people that are just getting here. So we've taken a lot of time the last couple of days – in really being thorough and detailed and articulating um, our program and who we are. And we didn't talk anything about football. Uh, today's the first day when we're actually getting to football. Uh, but I just, it just felt like it was very important that we kind of set the tone. And so it's been good and, uh, you know, excited to get out there and start the process. Just the, you know, you put the pads on for the first time. You haven't had any pads on since since spring, uh, you know, because you don't get to have the OTAs or whatever. So, you know, you, it's a longer gap since you put your, uh, you know, some of those guys will put them on and go out there and do some stuff in the summertime, but nobody's banging on each other. So that's probably the biggest thing is just kind of working through the, the soreness and, and kind of getting your, your callousness built back up into your body because uh, you really hadn't had any collisions since the spring. Uh, that's the biggest thing. From a mental standpoint, they really should be the furthest ahead that they've been all year. Because uh, we, you know, when we start over in January, you know, it's, it's, 
it's quality control, it's self-evaluation, it's, it's learning from your season, it's all applying all the lessons from that. And then you're going through all new inst all your installation all over again for spring. And then it's post spring. And then you go through all the installation again in the summer and they're doing it at a slower pace on their own with film study, you know, and, and but, but they have their skills and drills all tied together with it. And, um, so from a mental standpoint, they should all be further along at this point from where they were when we started in spring. Uh, so really the physical part, uh, kind of getting that part caught back up. Yeah, but with the weigh-in, were there any guys you were really happy with with where they came in or any guys that you were also disappointed with? Oh, uh, man, I was happy with the team, to be honest with you. I really wasn't disappointed with, with anybody. Uh, but really happy our team is lean, uh, we're strong. Uh, I, I really liked how we trained this summer. I thought Joey and the guys did an awesome job, kind of had a, uh, a really good plan for this team. Again, you, every team is different. And, and, and we had to kind of, same thing, they had to kind of go meet this, this team where they were with, with 80 freshmen and sophomores uh, out of 120 and, and, and train them a certain way this summer. And I thought it was great, but I, I think we're, the guys bought in, they worked hard, and especially the last couple of weeks you could just kind of see them taking another step and, and, and just you can even hear it. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of get out there and, and, uh, and, and take this next step with them. But you know, we had a bunch of guys that looked great. I mean, Jackson Carmen uh, put the work in. I mean, he's never going to be a, a skinny dude, uh, but you know, he looks a lot better than 360. Uh, that's for sure. And, and it's and he, and he just it's not just his weight. And that's where sometimes you know people look at the weight and they go. Oh, it's composition of the weight. You know, we want a good composition. That's what we're after. And, uh, you know, some guys need to lean up. Some guys need to can, can hold more and have, still have a good composition. But I really felt like our team uh, has put the work in to this point, and we're in a good spot. And, and it's fun, too, to see guys like T. Higgins. I mean, T was, hundred and I think, I think 178 pounds when he got here uh, coming out of high school. And I believe he was, I think he was 217 maybe. Uh, let's go check that, but two, 215, 217. And that's an, that's an amazing amount of work that's been put in. It's such a, that's one of the reasons we do that, you know, because it's just, it's like you can just, you see like Sheridan Jones. Sheridan got here in January, 160 pounds, and he's like 180 something. I mean, he's put on 20 something, but those, that's, that just shows you the work and the buy-in, the nutrition, and, and we have a program that works for those guys if they really will, if they will really follow what Joey's asked them to do and eat right, hydrate properly, get the proper sleep, and understand and buy into what you have to do to, to build your body the proper way. And so uh, I was really excited about a lot of those guys. I mean, it just, you know, Sean Pollard, uh, you know, he's playing center, so he dropped a little weight. He leaned up his composition. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that can get, he can be from 300 to 325 with, you know, two or three meals. And, uh, you know, some guys are just that way. And, but he's really in a good place. Um, so I, I, just, I, just think, I just think our team is, you know, Niles, Niles looks great. Uh, I mean, he has really worked hard. He's had his best summer ever. He's done a great job with his body and his composition. Uh, Jordan did the same thing. I'm excited to see them out there. Obviously, they weren't out there this spring. so. Can't wait to, to get out there with them uh, today. And, uh, but all those guys, man, those receivers look great. Uh, running backs, I thought, looked great. Trevor was 220, and he fought for that 20. Uh, he just, because it wasn't quite settled in, they were about to say 219, and then it kind of clicked to 220. Uh, so he was really, really happy about that. And um, I thought JC Chalk, he, he's another guy that I think got serious this summer. He's really accepted the challenge. And, and he was in that 258 range, and he kind of—he was one of those guys that needed to kind of change his composition a little bit. And he did that. He's gotten strong. Uh, so I'm excited about where we are. Um, I think we're in shape. I'm fixing to get out there and challenge him a little bit. Coach, with uh, Kyler gone, does that mean the, uh, the snaps for, for DK at wide receiver will be getting fewer? And, and how much of an opportunity does that uh, open the door for the young guys like uh, Sheridan Jones? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll probably just start that way as far as uh, really just kind of 
get him to build a great foundation there at corner. And, uh, and you know, it might be something that we kind of work on a package or something later on. But right now, we just want to get a good installation. He, he, need, he, didn't, he didn't, you know, we just kind of threw him over there. You know, it's not like he was in meetings or, or anything like, I mean, literally threw him over there in practice. So he, he needs to really get a good, solid foundation. Uh, we know what he can do with the ball in his hands, but we're, we're blessed and fortunate that we got some really good guys at receiver that we feel great about. So, uh, uh, but but somewhere down the line, hopefully we'll maybe have a little package. Obviously, he's played quarterback, and uh, you know, the package we worked on all last year, and you know, might be something that we dabble with later on uh, when we get deep into our install and stuff like that. But we want him to get off to a good start. Opportunities there uh, for Sheridan and uh, Mario is another guy that I think has really gotten it together this summer. Uh, he has really worked his butt off. He's his body's in a great spot. Uh, that kid can play. It's just it's just a matter of him mentally taking that next step and, and making up his mind. And, and I really see the right look in his eye. Uh, and then Andrew just got here, uh, so we'll uh, we'll see where all them guys are. But we got a good group. Coach, what'll be the signs that you start to see? Yeah, well, that's one of those things that's probably hard to uh, define, you know, but you know it when you see it, and you know it when you don't. Like I said, this, this is my this is my thirtieth team in college football, and uh, you can just smell it. Uh, so when that time comes, what specifically happens, I don't really know. I just know it when I see it. Yeah, I'm not asking anything. Uh, I'm just asking them to come in here and go to work, plug in, plug in, buy in, get in line, pay attention, uh, and 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 bring great attitude, great energy every day, and work every day to be the best that they can be and get better. You know, try to get better each day. That's all I'm asking. Uh, we, we he's here because we think he's a great football player, and uh, you know these guys are all these freshmen just getting here. None of them are great college players. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, we've had a chance to see a few from the spring uh, and evaluate, but when we've got several guys that came in here this summer that we haven't been on the field with one day, uh, I don't put any expectations on any of those guys. Uh, if they prove something and they earn something and they demonstrate that they mentally, physically, you know, maturity, all that stuff, that they're they're ready, then hey, they'll be they'll be ready to play because they're certainly going to get the opportunity because we're going to give everybody the opportunity to go compete. Uh, but uh, what my, I guess my one expectation is that, that uh, uh, you know, he develop into a great player and a great young man uh, because that's what we brought him here to do and, and uh, that's what he came here to do and, and he's got all the potential in the world. Debo, uh, with Christian and Dexter gone, are defensive guys knocking on your door about the Chumbo package or is that, oh, yeah. is that yeah, something yeah, we're yeah. not going to see very much? Oh, no, they all line up for that. Uh, <laughs> So I don't know. That's not. I got a kind of. I got a few thoughts. Uh, you know, that's kind of. That was. That kind of became my own little package. I kind of was my little baby last year, and uh, I had a lot of fun with that. But I gotta. I've got to. Uh, I gotta evaluate. You know, I got. I got a few ideas. Uh, so we'll see. With Jordan and Niles, where are they mentally, physically? And they're, they're, in, they're in a great spot. They really have worked very, very hard. Uh, you know, obviously we, we had a good plan for them in the spring. And uh, what I'm more, most, I mean, they, they put the great work in themselves and, and they're physically in a good place. But what I'm most proud of is they've tried to lead. You know, uh, they've been led since they've been here. And they, I think, really kind of hit them between the eyes when they got out there in the off season and they're looking around and they're, <laughs> they're going, oh my Lord. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I'm the only one that knows anything here. Uh, so, so it's been pretty cool to see that transition in them and to see them step up and take that role. Uh, I'm so thankful for Dexter and Christian and Huggy and Austin and all those guys. Uh, Plea, you know, because they set a great example on how to work, and they really did. 
And so those guys, are, are they passed it down, and Jordan and Niles have taken the reins, and they're going to do a great job. And, but we, the other thing I'm thankful for is we got some of those young guys. Uh, some of them don't have to be led. You know, you don't have to be a veteran player to, to be a leader, uh, to have great effort, to be relentless. Uh, and we've got a few of those young guys that, you know, they're, they, they ain't nobody got to lead them. They're, they're, they're ready uh, to go do it. And so I'm excited because a lot of them are going to get the opportunity and it's going to be incredibly competitive um, and fun to, fun to evaluate. Yeah, he looks great. He is a, he is really a great looking prospect. I mean, he's got length. Uh, he's got good size now and, and great size potential and strength potential. He's a really good athlete. Uh, he was a three sport athlete in high school. I mean, he's a he's a he's an excellent prospect for us and just an awesome kid. Uh, he's eager, you know. So. He, he's, as I said, he's going to be limited for a few days as he uh, rolled his ankle uh, in skills and drills a couple of weeks ago. So he's still kind of a little tender on that, working his way back. But he's he'll be he'll be up and running soon. But he's a guy that we're really anxious to to find out. You know, uh, when they when they cut him loose, like okay, where is he? Because we gotta we gotta we gotta mentally get him where he needs to be, and then and as soon as he can physically go, uh, get him up to speed. You know, so he's a guy that's. I don't, I don't see any way possible that he's not going to have to help us, but I, I don't know. We just have to see. But I, I really think he's going to be an outstanding guy for us, as is Jalen. You know, Jalen was 270 pounds or whatever. Uh, I mean, he is he is one of the freakiest looking dudes you'll ever see. Uh, I mean, this guy is a high school senior, basically. You know, obviously came in and went through the went through the spring. Um, I'm anxious to see where he is because he, he was way behind mentally in the spring. Just a lot to learn, and uh, but he's worked really hard. Another great kid, great potential. Uh, but same thing, as I said, we got to kind of meet them where they are and go from there. Uh, but got all the tools, that's for sure. But excited to see where Davis is because I haven't really had a chance to, to be on the field with him. Yeah, what's Jalen's like, composition at this day? Good. Like, yeah, he's good. I mean, he's just, he's just a – He's just kind of a he's just kind of a freaky guy, man. Uh, he's he's a big, strong, put together guy, and, and uh, you know, still got a little work to do with his composition. I mean, he's not bad, but but uh, you know, as he continues to get a little stronger, uh, you know, he's he's not going to ever be a skinny guy. Uh, he is a big, long, long athlete that's that's pretty muscled up uh, for a guy his age, but. But still young and still not and still maturing uh, into what he's going to be. But he's going to be a big man. Chris, what's your sense on how the Herb Street boys are fitting in so far, and is it perhaps uh, tougher for them coming in with the name recognition of their teammates? They've been great. Uh, they've been awesome. I think I think you know they've enjoyed every second of it. They're good teammates. I think the team has you know embraced them just like anybody else. I'm sure that it is probably you know a challenge for them. Uh, you know, just just like uh, if your name is Sweeney or Venables, uh, you know, or whatever, uh, Batson. Uh, but you know, that just they don't know any different. Uh, so they've been Herb Street their whole life, and it's just kind of uh, they just need to be who they are. And uh, but Jake and Ty are, are, are great additions. Uh, I'm excited about their opportunity and that whole group. That whole group that came in here this summer, really, really fun group of guys to be around. And, and I, I always love this day because it's, it's the first chance for a lot of them to put that helmet on and get on the field and, and uh, you know, just going through flex, you know, getting a chance to, to take a deep breath and take it all in and realize, man, my college career is, is beginning. Uh, but uh, those two guys are, are, are grinders and workers and, and uh, great additions to our program. Time for about two more. The guys behind Travis and Eugene, I know Katie just left, but there's some opportunity there for guys to step up. Yeah, huge opportunity. Uh, you know, I mean, Tavian was was a, I mean, he's, he's a great player. Uh, so you know, he's gone. Uh, it's a big, it's a big void, and obviously it starts with Linje. I mean, he's a, a guy that came in and and really proved himself last year. You know, he didn't quite get as many.